Hey everybody, I'm Shayna. I am your <laughs> I'm a fucking fraudulent <laughs> host here for Allison, who does not have Wi-Fi while she is taking some time off on the bye week. Um, she is our leader and organizer, so you're gonna see how valuable she is today when you listen to me talk. Um, I am joined by the fashionable, the smart, the brilliant Sarah Sivian. Sarah, how are you today? Yeah. Wow, you even got the adjectives down, Pat. I am good. If you see me in this dark room, I am currently marinating in my like (laughs) Miami prep right now because we're going to the All-Star Game, if you haven't heard, and we're very excited about it. So I made Shayna do the hosting, and she's already (laughs) crushing it. No matter what she thinks, she is crushing it. And yeah, bear with us right now. And I promise when we get back from the All-Star Game, we're going to have all our little new equipment set up it's just been a process but you know you guys know us you know we revel in the process we need a very lengthy process literally (laughs) always there's a hundred things happening at once hockey can't give us 4.2 seconds to breathe or you know the both of us are disorganized as it is like Mm -hmm. we'll get there eventually i'll have less of an echo eventually (laughs) with this all coming together (laughs) yes okay so it's time for sarah sivian's favorite segment sarah bit on news uh so first up we're gonna stick with the all-star game we're gonna talk about the fact that maddie veneers is not going um <laughs> he's injured he was injured a couple games before it so he can't play and they replaced him with chandler stevenson therefore there are no players from the kraken going to the all-star game which is unfortunate but like can we talk about the fact that the all-star break if you are not going to the game is a vacation and a lot of players had vacations booked yeah, I'm already seeing pictures of certain players with like free peat, free peat fix, free feet picks already unleashing the dogs in various tropical areas around the world. So people have probably already gone on their vacations, right? So I'm sure the Kraken are asking, okay, can you come? Can you come? And everybody else is already in Cabo or wherever they're going. I wonder where the hot spot is this year. Maybe it's Miami because I know a lot of them went to Miami last year even though the game wasn't there. And now it's like, okay, the game, I mean, to be clear, the game's like an hour away from Miami, but (laughs) I'm sure a lot of players are going and meeting up with their all-star buddies too. It's like when the NHL in the bubble is like promoting Banff and Edmonton as one when we're like, no, it doesn't work that way. Look at a map. It's not the same thing, but no, like, I don't know. A lot of players need to just like rest, recover, not think about hockey or just like, I don't know. They have families, they have lives, they have, 4.2 4.2 seconds to themselves. That's not going to be spent at an NHL event. So I don't know. I just, I get it sucks that yeah. not every team is represented. I get it sucks that William Nylander is not there. Everyone's up in arms over that. And Tim Stutzel didn't get in when Matthews is out. But like this, these are the breaks. And our other bit of news, by the way, is that, see, I'm <laughs> hosting really my <laughs> No, forte. it's all connected. It's all connected. So Austin Matthews at three weeks, he injured his knee against the New York Rangers Um, and replacing him is Barkoff. And a lot of people are questioning what the process is of picking replacements when, I mean, part of it just has to be like looking for people who are not on vacation who actually want to go. But obviously Mitch Marner was picked for the Leafs. See, now we got the Leafs and all is right in the world. Um, Mm -hmm. And it's not William Nylander replacing him. It's Barkoff. And that gives the home team a little more representation. We talked about that the other day, like, when does an all-star game happen and they have one player from their team because their team's that bad. So I don't know, like, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Realistically, if Barkov had been healthy the entire season, he'd probably be in the game as it is. And obviously this is for the people of Florida and I'm pandering a little bit because I'm excited to meet all of you. (laughs) And it's not every day you guys get an all-star game, but I think People in Florida who are going to this event want to see Barkov, right? I think that's a win for everyone. And it's not an arduous travel situation. Like he's right there and he's going to want to be in the event. So I think it's nice. Oh my God. Can I disrupt our podcast for a second? The devil's uh, GM, GM. the devil's mascot just DM'd me asking (laughs) me when I'm going to get to the all-star game. So guys look for some content with me and the devil. Anyway. (laughs) <laughs> um no I was just gonna say it's not like Barkov's some like fourth line or third line player like he's yeah you know last year was like MVP caliber and obviously like you said he would have been there if he was healthy um 
So everyone just needs to relax. No one's out to get the Leafs. Maybe William Nylander is busy. Maybe he's relaxing and recharging for the second half. Because, like, for all we know, he might have to pivot to center if it doesn't work out with, like, the current plan they have If Matt, while Matthews is out. So, like, let him just go be fashionable and have, have a good time wherever he wants to go for the All-Star break. Yeah, it's kind of a lot. And people don't realize that it is a lot. So I like the move of Barkov. And I know... A lot of people have already jetted to vacations or they actually are. In, like, I'm sure Austin Matthews is like out for three weeks. It's not pulling an Ovechkin there. So I'm going to give people the benefit of the doubt. Also, a lot of people are just tired. It's been a rough few years. Let us rot in bed, but not me. I'm going to be up and active and so excited at this event. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I am not going to be active this week. I will. You deserve to rest. You deserve to rest. <laughs> We're throwing a party here Friday, actually, oh and it's like God. the first, it's our friend's birthday, and the first, I guess it's a housewarming, I don't fucking know, so I'm like cramming everything, and then Saturday, I'm doing literally nothing, and I can't wait, I cannot think of the last time I had two days to do nothing, so you maybe I'll be refreshed when we return, and less frazzled, who's to say? I know, we'll FaceTime you, though, at the event, I'm sure. Yes, please. Um. Okay, so one more thing about the All-Star game is that the NHL did invite women to it which is nice they know a couple women <laughs> we have hillary knight alex carpenter sarah nurse i think altogether it's five women from the national teams joining which is super exciting uh the question is in what capacity will they be competing will they be there just so the nhl can be like hey we know women will they be demonstrating and if they do demonstrate this time will they get paid if they beat the men like we saw Brianna Decker last time so hopefully the NHL has learned from their mistakes it's always nice to see some inclusion but who's to say what that inclusion will be yeah I'm excited for that obviously and if any of you happen to be listening please come on the podcast we'll be there we with our mics ready so I just I remember one time I ran into Hillary Knight in Tampa and I don't get starstruck when it comes to like regular people I cover, but I saw her and AJ Malesko was there and I'm friends with her. But Hillary came walking down and I was so frazzled that I just turned around. I was like, I can't, <laughs> I can't meet her right now, but I could meet you on the podcast this weekend. So if you're listening, Hillary, I'm- if you're listening, we know you're <laughs> <the> listening. <podcast. laughs> now that you know Al- now that you're officially friends with Allison after yes. working with her for the team yeah. USA. Team Canada game, join the podcast and then come on a second time in the playoffs too. So we can just talk shit about how the men are, you know, inferior to you, exactly. please. Uh, okay. So our last bit of news is not all-star related. We are talking about Kuzmenko of the Canucks getting a contract extension. Um, it's a $2 million contract in the first year. Oh, I'm sorry. It's two years, $5.5 million on average. Uh, there's signing bonuses in it, $2 million in the first year and a million in the second year. Sarah, what are your thoughts about the Canucks extending the winger? That's a mess. That's so expensive for him. I just think, like, what is the plan? They need to blow it up immediately. I'm not pleased with that contract. I don't, no offense to him. I just don't <laughs> think he's moving the needle the way the needle needs to be moved. And that is a steep price for a winner yeah it's it's an odd choice given every first of all there were (laughs) talks about him potentially being traded a couple days before that which makes sense because here the Canucks are saying everybody's untouchable I mean everybody's up for grabs except for like their one untouchable Pedersen Mm -hmm. where are we going with this unless this contract's to make him more tradable to do you think that you can get a bigger return if you decide to trade him over the summer now that he's signed like I don't know. It's kind of harsh to do that too. Like, here's a new contract. Also, we're going to trade you in a minute. Like, I I just don't get the vision. I don't get what they're doing. I never did. I never will. And this just like adds to it. Like, do you know your direction? Because everything you say says one thing and then you do things and it's like, do what I say, not what I do. Oh, 100%. Okay. To be fair to him, he's had 21 goals and 43 points in 48 games this season. I guess I just like the Canucks have been so bad. I guess he's Uh, one of several bright spots so you know what I'm always happy when players get paid obviously this is an up year for him so cash in (laughs) on the Vancouver Canucks is dime I have no problem with that I just don't know where they're going but I'm glad players are getting paid in the process of that yeah if you if you're choosing to sit through that which Mm -hmm. it's a choice 
it is a choice <laughs> to want to be a part of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, get get some money while you're at it. Um, sure. So Vancouver actually makes it to the bit of news. They're not on the we wish we weren't you or the shit list, but <laughs> there is another team on the shit list this week. Um, so the Rangers were hosting Pride Night against the Vegas Golden Knights. They did send out an email a couple weeks beforehand saying that they were going to have the pregame jerseys uh, dedicated to Pride Night and uh, rainbow tape sticks that they'd be donating. It's not like they've only, like, this is the first year they plan to do it. This is what they've been doing the last few years. That is the exact plan they followed the last couple of years. They auctioned off the jerseys and the sticks and donated money in the process. And this year, that didn't happen. Um, they came out for warmups wearing their Lady Liberty jerseys. They did have a puck drop that was for it. They did have the anthem, you know, all of that that was set to be ready for Pride Night. But it just felt like every the little efforts that they made that they went through with were overshadowed because here we go, a team not wearing the jerseys. Uh, there was a ton of speculation on why they didn't wear the jerseys. Was this something the league did? because the league didn't want any negative blowback after the Provorov situation? Was it that a player had said something, which led to a lot of people, unfortunately, speculating on, of course, the Russian players on the team, like who didn't want to be a part of this? Because you never know if a player now feels that they can easily say no to a Pride Night thing if they don't believe in it, because nothing happened to Provorov. But Molly Walker did some reporting. The league, according to, I think it was Bill Daly she spoke to, said they did not say anything and a uh, player to confirm that when they went into the locker rooms for warmups, the jerseys just weren't there and nothing was said about it. So, Sarah, what are your thoughts on the situation? Yeah, it reminds me a little bit of when I found out the Hurricanes didn't have a Hockey is for Everyone ambassador. And it turned out that they told me the league wasn't mandating that anymore. And then I asked the league and they're like, yeah, we didn't we have done away with that program entirely. And then the next week there was a hockey for everyone event in Columbus. So it's just so disbanded and disjointed. And the league is really taking a non stance on all of this on purpose. So every team has to fend for itself. And then it has just been an absolute shit show of lack of communication. Like there was nothing good that would come of them pretending that they didn't send out the email that, they were going to auction up these jerseys and wear them. Like, I don't get how all of these teams have been messing up so badly in the communication front, right? Like this has happened with Provorov too, where they didn't disclose what was happening because they wanted people to just ignore it or forget about it. Or like, it's making a mockery of your queer fans and making a mockery of people's intelligence, right? Like be transparent. And you don't want to say the quiet part out loud, but you're forced to when you get out there and you're not wearing the jerseys and everyone's like, what the hell? And the Canes had a similar situation last week where they only a few of the players had tape on and it's so disjointed. And it's just like, this is the effect of the Provorov situation, right? You can't, I didn't want him to pretend that he's not homophobic, right? But then it kind of makes every other team be like, well, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. And who knows? It, It might mean... I don't know what it means. Do you think it means somebody on the team is homophobic and said, I don't want to wear this. And they decided not to like, I I'm struggling to figure out why, how this came about. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's the case because like a lot of the players who were there last year are still there this year and they've participated in it before. A lot of them shared it on their social media channels and seem more than willing to do it. But like, I, I mean, I truly don't know if that's the case. Um, It's tough though. Like, I don't know how much of this was an overreaching hand from higher up in the organization. Like, let's face it, with the Rangers and ownership and things like that, when they want something, they tend to get what they want. No matter the chaos they cause, the ripple effect, they just do it. And that's that. Like, it, it's it's odd when they choose to chime in sometimes. It, I really don't know why they did this. I don't know if there was the fear of blowback from it. I, I yeah, couldn't tell I think you. So. Like, you know, just like in I- case. Could they have been like, oh, sorry, go. No, it's okay. We keep trying to, I know. I I think everyone's brains are completely broken by discourse like this. And we need to get real. Like homophobia shouldn't be like a, it's not queer people's, like it's not queer people's fault that their existence has been politicized, but it is 
politicized now by right-wing extremists. And if you want to say, we don't want to offend anybody, we don't want to, there's very like, I, it sounds like Donald Trump saying there's good people on both sides to me when this discourse happens, because I can't believe what I'm seeing from these NHL teams when they say that. It seems like after the Provorov thing too, like Torts and the Flyers organization saying they want to respect everybody's beliefs. I don't want to respect your beliefs if you're homophobic. And I think so many are missing the mark on this. And being silent about this is picking a side. Like you can't stay neutral on this if you're saying, oh, it's okay if they hate gay people. Like my cat is going feral right now. I think she agrees with me. <laughs> but it, you can't, you're siding with an oppressor if you're like, oh, I'm just going to turn a blind eye and let this guy be homophobic because it's his belief. It's just nonsense. Yeah, We're moving backwards I, too, because last year everybody did these events, and now it's slowly deteriorating. Like ever since the NHL told me that they got rid of this initiative and they're letting teams do it, it has completely dissolved and it's lost its cohesiveness. Even the you can play people are saying we need to create space for everybody. I'm just like, we're moving backwards, and it's very frustrating. Yeah, it just seems like too like it's not. It's not that I want someone to do it if they don't want to do it because that, that's fake. I understand that, but I don't want that person to be closed minded in the first place. I want them to understand why we do this, why this is important, why you don't want to fuck with your fan base, why you don't want to hurt other people and be closed minded. Like there's a if I'm supposed to respect your religion or your anything I can to a point, but not if it means being homophobic and being closed minded. And even if you say, mm. well, they're from a culture that X, I, well, you're not in it anymore. The world's evolving. I'm sorry if you come from a place that has, you know, terrible ideals. That's not that doesn't fucking matter anymore. Like it's 2023. Like the bar is so low that we're asking for too. This is like the biggest thing. Like, wear a jersey in, <laughs> in a, wear a jersey with a rainbow on it and have it get auctioned. What is so difficult about that? And so many people act like it's such a daunting task. Has anybody ever said, I don't want to do military appreciation night or police appreciation night? Because there have been times that I would say anyone could say that crossed the line. You know, like there have been teams that have had like the Blue Lives Matter flag shown on the ice or in their advertisements. Yeah. And nobody wants to push back on that. If you're opening the door to push back on Pride Night, then every single thing should be rediscussed and figured out and maybe you should celebrate nothing then and be as bland as humanly possible but you can't pick and choose so if you want to do this and you want to do these different types of nights to raise money and try to target different points of your fan base then i don't know maybe include this in it and make it something that you're enthusiastic about and it's not just a task it's it's like not that hard to try to be inviting and trying to want to grow the game and make people feel included in it that's what it is. If you're a hockey player in the National Hockey League, which is a privilege, there are so many spots and you can't see that your entire fan base should feel included, like they have a place in hockey, then maybe you don't deserve a beer spot in the NHL. Like simple as that. And finally, it just makes me so sad thinking of any of the closeted NHL players or NHL players and coaches that I know that have gay immediate family. You know, it's like they shouldn't have to this is what allyship is supposed to be about, right? You shouldn't have to stand up for yourself or come out for people to respect who you are as a person. And I just know that there are closeted gay people in the NHL right now that are in these locker rooms having, I, I want to know what the locker room talk is about this because something tells me it is really depressing and either non-existent and that's depressing. I, I just wish that there were more conversations being had about this. And that's why I admire my friend Rock McGillis so much. He just, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but he's embarking on a new exciting project that is really grassroots and he's going around to junior teams and normalizing being gay in hockey, like that, and that it's not, it doesn't have to be some huge declaration or whatever it is, but it's like, I, I don't know, people need to be educated more. And it's just really depressing to see things moving backwards. So I am proud of the work people like Vince and Molly have done in New York to make sure that this isn't just normalized and forgotten the fact that they like the Rangers 
half-assed their announcement. Like they didn't announce that this wasn't like, what if you had a little gay kid and you brought him to get one of these jerseys and then they go out in these Lady Liberty jerseys? Like it's just horrible marketing. Shame on them. That's it. Yep. And, you know, anyone can point to, well, if you look at the press release from that night, they did everything, but it's different from the email. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. The email was sent January 8th. This was not sent October 15th. And it wasn't, if you're a professional team, especially the Rangers with how they run their public relations department, every single thing I'm sure is completely inspected and figured out what they want, how they want it to be sent out. It was sent out a certain way and it didn't live up to that. So that is the gap. It does not matter what the press release said that night. The gap is the initial plan to the actual execution. So NHL teams, please do better. NHL players, please do better. And even if your team doesn't do something pride related to the millions of NHLers listening to this and aspiring NHLers, we know you're, you <laughs> yeah. know, the true. Connor McDavid, podcast. listen up. <laughs> yeah. Connor McDavid, Tajay, Hillary, everybody <laughs> listening. You can still do things. Even if it's not a team event, you can wear a pride flag to the game you can make donations you can tweet about it you can share links you can do whatever the fuck you want because you're still an individual and there's nothing wrong with that so you have giant platforms maybe try using them Mm -hmm. okay so now in other good news this is a podcast filled with sunshine and flowers before the all-star game we got to get you Every bit of shit that we can. Um, before a bit of know, news, bit of shit. Bit it's of like shit. a dreadful lineup we have here for you folks. Yeah, we're going to do our best to give you our takes after. With this one, we saw a million hot takes flying around. Uh, let's talk, talk about Troy Stetcher and Trevor Zegris. Um, the Coyotes and the Ducks played the other night. There was a scrum. Trevor Zegris said something to Stetcher. It seemed like it infuriated him. There were reactions all around. He got a 10 minutes misconduct, a 10 minute misconduct and everybody, and I mean, everybody on Twitter has become a lip reading expert and decided that um, Zegris said something about Stetcher's father passing in their expertise lip reading situation, which has uh, since been reported by Craig Morgan. He said he can confirm that Zegris did not say anything about Stetcher's father during their dust up. But it was something that crossed the line with inappropriate comments. Um, Stetcher has declined to comment on the topic. Uh, apparently, Brad Marchand has thoughts and loves to hop on Twitter yeah. just to <laughs> spread some shit and add to the drama. You can always um, count him. We can, yeah. Brad, thank you. If you want to come on the podcast and discuss your Twitter usage, we'd love to hear it. Um, he responded to. Craig Morgan saying, shut your pie hole, Craig. So thank you. <laughs> thank you for the contribution to the discourse. So Sarah, have you well, become a lip reading expert? No. And I feel like I did dry January and I've been so sober and have so many more brain cells right now. And I wish so badly I didn't have these brain cells because the discourse around this is making me lose my mind. I'm like, everybody, it's like they wanted to hate Zeker so bad or they wanted to love him so bad that it's like everyone's saying he did say this. He didn't say this. Or if he didn't say this, what he said was so bad because look at their reactions. I'm like, what are we talking about right now? Why do you care so much? I don't know. I just love that Brad chimed in too. But I guess the context there is Zegris said something to um, Trent Frederick, who's a rookie or second year Bruin player. Uh, that really got him going and that made Bruins players want to donate money to like mental health initiatives. So I'm like, what is going on with our little Zegris here? Like, I really want to know what he said both times because the Coyotes did say that there were some very inappropriate comments, but it wasn't about Stetcher's dad. So I'm, I don't know if the Coyotes would cover up for Zegris. I don't think they would. What is the reason but people are getting so mad when you say or even like wonder if he really did say that. They're like, he said it and you're going to hell if you really think that he didn't say that and you condone this and you love like, OK, I'm not going to go there about death. But I, it's just obviously he said something really bad. I don't know. What are your thoughts on this, Shane? I'm like losing my mind trying to think about it. Yeah, I think that. I think people need to be realistic about what's said on an NHL ring and what goes on and how players chirp each other. Like, it's not good. It is not good, the shit that they say to each other, which is the point. 
Is it something that Zegers could have said that crossed the line that was legitimately bad relative to the already bad shit that I think everyone would be surprised to hear? Because everyone's acting like, oh my God, like my virgin ears can't hear this or mm-hmm. can't read this on someone's lips. Mm-hmm. Like, I think they need a reality check of what's said. Not that it's right or wrong, but like, that's the fact of the matter. If this was that bad, I mean, I truly don't know what it could have been. I think that if he wanted to, if it was something... I don't know, like maybe it would have gotten out if it was something that it was like, we should shame Zegers for it. Look, we know the Coyotes and the Ducks don't like each other. We know that they don't like Zegers and him scaling it up. And it can also be true that Zegers is an asshole. Like Mm -hmm. he could have all of these chirps up his sleeve and he could cross the line and be like a little, I don't know, is he cocky? Like who's to say, I can't, I can't say he's on the ice. We don't know. You know, players can act a certain way, I'm sure, on the ice and have a persona and act like they're tougher than they are, not for nothing. Like, look at what happened between these teams last year just because he did a skillful play and they felt that he was being an asshole for it. It's just the way this situation blows up. Like, are we that bored? Do we need to make something out of a Coyotes Ducks game of all things? Like, I'm sorry. I watched, <laughs> are you bored? I watched that third period because there was nothing else on. And I was just like winding down for the night, but like, I don't know. I'm not going to go like up and I I literally would have had to be something so drastic for me to actually give enough of a shit to be up in arms about something. I just can't stand how everyone, like you said, it's the discourse around it. It's like, let's make a problem out of nothing. Like if the coyotes wanted this to be known, what he said, it would have been known. And maybe Zegers is an asshole. Like I can't chalk it up to anything more than that. Like to speculate and pretend I can read his lips or assume he would say something about someone's, like dead parent like what are we doing why are we making this drama into something like I don't know where that even comes from like where does it start I just I don't understand I know I watched the video a few times and I could see he like pointed to the sky but then people were saying like the swirly things but I could see how people might think that that was an option of what he said but I am not here to read lips and clearly The Coyotes are saying he didn't say that, but I I feel like what we're watching here is Zegra slowly (laughs) losing his mind as this horrible season goes on. Like he did the state, the whatever he said to Frederick, he's taking sticks out of players' hands. He's getting like really, really unexpectedly edgy for someone who's so skilled. And (laughs) the Ducks have like a negative eight. Last time I checked, they had a negative 87 goal differential. So this is like historically down bad. And that can make you lose your mind a little bit, especially if you're like a goal scorer. So I don't know. I don't want to give him too much credit because Brad Marchand is a lot of things, but he's not a liar. So I'm wondering what Brad knows or what's going on. But I am, I was fully, okay, this isn't a big deal until Brad chimed in poor Craig is in the fr- I love Craig Morgan uh Coyotes reporter he's in the friendly fire now shut your pie hole Craig okay Brad but I Zegers is kind of giving me Sean Avery right now yeah a little bit um you know but you could be right though it might be like frustration boiling it could be that everyone feels that they can just kick his ass because he's like scrawny and skilled like that could totally be it but like the ducks are so bad. I was writing my January vibe check today and the vibes are putrid, oh, deteriorating, <laughs> sinking, whatever you want to say for the ducks. And they are actually like the primary focus of it. Mm-hmm. Um, that all situation goal differential is the 17th worst since uh, the Red Wings back in 2000, 2001. And that's only yeah. at the 50 game mark. It's on pace to be the worst since the Thrashers in 2000. <laughs> they are. <laughs> it's so bad. And you it's look so at bad. the results. It's like I saw it and it was so stark. And then I looked at the results and I'm like, oh, my God, they're losing like every game by six. Yeah. And like Easy. even they've allowed they're on pace to allow 336 goals against the season, which would be the worst since the Sharks in 1995-96, they allow 4.06 goals against per game. Oh, my uh, God. That's tracked since 1996-97. That's the worst of anybody. <laughs> Funny it's enough, so though, bad. the team that's second is Vancouver, this Vancouver team right now. So that's something. But at least Vancouver sometimes has offense. Like, the Ducks don't have that. They're terrible. So mm-hmm. m- maybe it's frustration boiling because as much as it's like a rebuilding team, I think this is way worse the results, the play, the everything that anyone expected. But 
there there could be something more there. Like, I don't know. NHLers, <laughs> let us know. Let us know what makes Trevor Zegers an asshole. We'll keep it totally anonymous if you want. Just uh g- maybe, give us give us the tea, please. Maybe we gotta have our girl Lisa Dillman back on or at least get the tea from her. It's a great idea. Um, should we stick with more assholes? That's the theme. I <laughs> mean, yeah, there's one more. Oh my god. This is a big one. Stories today. So Bobby Hall died. And some of you might think of him as an NHL player who was skilled. And some of you might think of him as an abusive, horrible person that was anti-Semitic that, um, like the list for him is so bad. He was a racist. He was not a good person. It was a huge choice for the Blackhawks to welcome him back in as an ambassador. Um, but there's a lot of discourse now that he's passed that not everybody wants to sing his praises. Uh, it drives me up a wall when like, we have to like sanctify a person when they die uh sorry you said it really well before like he lived a long life like this He's is 84. not yeah he was 84 so so you know I, I just I have a problem with pretending someone was a saint when they die when they were as terrible of a person as uh Bobby Hull was we could look at Mark Lazarus uh included a snippet from a story that he wrote at the athletic And it said, do you see him with the Stanley Cup in his hands, the one he won in 1961? Do you envision him with that famous banana blade stick in his hands, the one he helped popularize, maybe even with intent alongside Blackhawks teammate Stan Makita? Or do you see him with the steel-heeled women's shoe in his hands, the one he allegedly used to beat his then-wife, Joanne, over the head, leaving her covered with blood and believing this is the end, as she told ESPN in a 2002 documentary. So this is the person people want to pretend is a saint. Uh, Sarah, what do you think? Three wives is on record to abuse them all. And he, his kids have horrible things to say about him. I just think, I don't know if people understand it wasn't just like in theory, he said some bad things. I, I feel like cancel culture in a lot of ways has ruined people's perception of right and wrong because, oh, don't cancel him. Like everybody's good and canceled. No, this person was charged with domestic abuse multiple times. And I also, I don't know, I grapple with this a lot. And I think it's human to grapple with this, right? Of, bringing up bad things about someone the second they died. I know a lot of people are getting upset about that on Twitter because death is such a taboo subject in our world. A lot of that's because of capitalism. If you ask me, we're not, we're, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go there today. But I, I think we don't want to face our own mortalities. And we hope that when we die, people will remember good things about us. For me, I don't care. I hope bad people still hate me and talk shit about me on Twitter when I die. That'll be my legacy. But yeah, I don't know if I want to jump to say horrible things about him, but we are just speaking facts about his life that are on the record on uh, his record of his life. And I think when you write stories about this and talk about this, you absolutely have to include these things. And it's not trying to cancel a dead person. If you're talking about things that happened throughout their lives and their legacy because he did these things. And it's not like he suddenly tragically died. You know, he is 84 years old, died of natural causes. And he has, I I hate the phrase checkered past because that's been on so many headlines. It's like, what do you mean checkered past? He is a domestic abuser. And I don't know if there's anything checkered about it, but I don't know. That's a bone to pick. And I have just gone back because I know Maybe when I was younger, it was like so edgy to talk about how people were bad the second that they died. And I don't think I'm being edgy or crass when I just talk about things that he did. Yeah. And it feels like it's important that that's covered with it, because I think we're getting two different ways of reporting. We're getting the let's wipe the bad out and pretend this person was a saint and only talk about the good versus let's tell the full story. I don't think we're, I don't think, like you said, we should be out here trying to cancel a dead person, but I think we should be careful not to start idolizing someone because they died Mm -hmm. and pretend none of that happened when I think all of that's an important part of their story. For in his case, this wasn't a one-off thing that we're saying to find him as a person. 
This was who he was. These were things that happened throughout his life, throughout his career. And, you know, Allison said it really well, just because, you know, you can be an exceptional at, you can be exceptional at your job and not be exceptional as a person. And I think that's super important to remember in this case. And while he was alive, many chose to turn a blind eye to it. So it's not mm-hmm. surprising that now that he's not, people are going to turn a blind eye to it. But just as it was important while he was alive, it's important now. You tell the entire story of who this person was. And that was not a good person for a yeah. number of reasons. He did horrific things. He had no reason to be um, the face of the Blackhawks in many ways. It's not surprising it's them, an ambassador who got to do things and work with the team and have that privilege after, you know, sorry, I'm a broken record, but we talk about the NHL being a privilege and playing in it. Like he's someone who didn't earn that. It doesn't matter how good at his job he might've been because of everything else. And it, you shouldn't get the privilege of being an ambassador for an NHL team, an original six franchise. You shouldn't have the privilege of being idolized afterwards because of what you did as a player. Like this is someone who you really do need to look at the entire picture and be honest about who he was, what he was. And that should be talked about now. And if you choose to ignore that, Uh, You really need to just look at yourself, at your, you know, at your priorities. It's totally true. You need to read, like, if you are so okay throwing everything away that you know about Bobby Hall now that he died and pretend anything else, like, why? What is, what, who are you trying to impress? Like, I don't get it. I don't, I just, I don't get it. I just hate, and this happens every time a celebrity dies too. I hate hate the discourse on Twitter about it for better or for worse. If it was someone that I loved too, I just think it's so weird. Like just something doesn't sit right with me about immediately there's the takes immediately. Like, I I don't know. I'm still working through this. I think a lot of people are too, right? Where you're facing your own mortality when somebody suddenly dies and you're facing everyone you love is mortality. And I think it's okay sometimes if you want to say, oh, don't talk, whatever. I think it's okay to sit with it and not have an opinion about someone's death. Like, I, I think it's okay to... Can we apply that to everything? Yeah. Sorry to cut you off. Can... No. It's okay to not have an opinion on literally everything we spoke about today. Yeah. It's okay to not have an opinion about lip reading between Troy Stetcher and Trevor Zegers. It's okay to not tweet about Bobby Hall. I have nothing good to say about him. Not a single thing I can think of that's good to say about him. I simply did not tweet. That's exactly how I'm taking it too, because I don't want to be an edge lord about death because I know somebody's death is about so much more than that one person's death. And a lot of people, it's human to project on that and to be weird about death. So it's like, I don't blame people for their reaction sometimes, but I am not going to react. All I want to say is I do feel for his five children who he was not in their lives, including Brett, who was also a Hall of Famer. Um, I feel for them and all the confusing, conflicting emotions they must be feeling right now. Yep. And how much this, I'm sure, is stirring it up because, you know, rightly or wrongly, you're going to see headlines. You're going to see things about here. But what we what I read about what Mark Lazarus wrote, do you think everybody wants to relive that they had to deal with it? Absolutely not. So, you know, no obviously what- feel for them. No matter what people say about Mark, I think that was a beautiful story. And he's such a good reporter where I know what his beliefs are on this. But I do think he did a great job of not being too like outraged or like a lightning rod take about it. Right. He's saying exactly what happened. And he understands like the legacy. Right. And it is he's one of the best goal scorers of all time. And it's okay to have weird feelings about that. Yep. I totally agree. I think of anyone to cover it, I feel like he's become such an expert on it. And maybe it's because he's had to deal with things relating to the Blackhawks for all this time. But yeah, there's a way to do this. And I think that's something to learn from, because I think especially like anyone who's in media doing this, we're all going to have to take notes. We're all going to have to learn how to handle situations that come our way. Like, and (laughs) given everything in hockey, we know the situations can be different levels of horrifying. So it's always good to like when something like this happens, kind of like take note of how it's covered, how it's handled and see what we can do different. I know for me, if I was in the situation, I probably wouldn't know how to handle that and how to cover it, you know, the right way. So yeah, I definitely appreciate seeing his work out there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, fun times today, fellas and ladies. (laughs) Okay. So 
Let's <laughs> lighten it with something completely and totally and absolutely different from everything we've talked about and go back to something we did last week. It's our favorite time of the podcast. It's time for <laughs> Fuck, Mary Kill. Last week, we talked about Bo Horvat and places we could see him going. Uh, we'll lighten it up by talking about Timo Meyer, who seems like a very nice person <laughs> and a very good player. Um, <laughs> I went through rumors about him. I went through speculation on where he could go and randomly picked three teams. Uh, so, Sarah, fuck Mary Kill, where you want to see Timo Meyer end up at the trade deadline. The Devils, the Kraken, the Red Wings. Okay. I am going to marry the devils. I just feel like he'd fit in there. I feel like they probably it's out of conference. So I feel like it's more likely to actually happen, you know, other than uh, the Kraken. And I think it is a nice fit all around. And the devils have been, excellent when they're good but a little inconsistent overall so that could really boost them i would kill the red wings like what, what's the point right now stick to the yezer plan whatever and i'm going to fuck the kraken because it would be dramatic in the same conference and juicy and i do think it'd be really fun to see the kraken go far and i feel like i have the funds for it for an extension or anything like that so i would love to see that too. Maybe I'd marry it. I don't know. It's a close call. Your thoughts? Okay. Um, I'm going to kill the Red Wings too. I think a team like the Red Wings, the Sabres should be looking at this because it reminds me of like the Alex Dubrincat situation where it's like a young uh, player. So <laughs> he's a young I, guy. I, like, yeah, he's a young player. It makes sense. I just want to see them focus on the Larkin extension first that I'm like, maybe you don't need this. Um after that, I will, I'll fuck the Devils. I think it would actually be a really good fit for them, but I am curious how they figure out everything. I think they need a high-end winger. I yeah. just feel like they're not going to go for it. So it's like, you don't want to like get excited for something. I feel like they're always the team that's in the mix. And so like, they're going to spice it up. They're going to do this. And then it falls a little flat. I think the idea of like this, like Swiss team is super fun. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I just don't see it happening. And I look, I could be totally wrong. And that's completely fine with me. I, I don't give a shit one way or another. But like, <laughs> I just feel like it's it, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to go as bold as that and then try to like, manage the salary cap between that and Brad's next extension. So I don't know. I just feel like they go for something a little lower key, which is what they did all summer. They didn't go for Johnny Gaudreau. They didn't go for Debrinkat. They went for Plot. They didn't go for the big goaltender. They went for Vanacek. And it's paying off fine for them. And I think here they could go a little bigger. I still don't think they're going to do it. And then I will marry the Kraken. I like the fun vibes of Seattle. Absolutely. I like how they're winning games. I like that they're going at it with four legitimate scoring lines and all these unique goal scorers and a team that's all about their forward depth and their defensive depth. And I think that's so cool. I, and it's, it goes against everything we talk about for a contender. You need star power at every position, blah, blah, blah. I want to see what they can do with a legitimate star in the mix with the well-rounded team that they have. Can, can you get away with like one or two star players and then just have a really good group behind that for support? Like, I don't know. I'm intrigued by that instead of, you have to be the next Colorado Avalanche where you're like headlined by star power. Can you be a team that has Timo Meyer in a year? You have Matty Veneers who let's say he's a star and then everyone else is just a good player. Around the Ron Francis sure. special. Yeah. Why not? Like, let's see how it works. I think that, I don't know. I just like it. I like and, I like, and they have the assets, their moves at the last deadline. Like I just think it yeah. works. Yeah. It work. It makes the most sense with the assets for sure. Yeah. So that's all we have for you on this episode. Of That's Two it? Men. That is it. We have covered enough. We hope you go outside and like, I don't know, pet a dog and have a nice time after listening to this because we have to go through so much shit. We'll have all-star content. And by we, I don't mean My me. God. Sarah and Allison are going to cut you with all content. Um, you can follow us uh, on Twitter. We're two underscore much underscore man. You can buy our merch, including our switch cases at... Our Teespring, that's linked on our Twitter because we don't know the link by heart and that's totally okay. You can raise money for Sarah getting a switch by just throwing <laughs> money her way. Whatever you want, whatever makes you yeah. happy. And you can also tell Allison how much we miss her because this hosting thing is just not for me and that's okay. 
I think you did a great job. There were some curveballs thrown at us today, and it was not the most fun episode to have to host, but you did it, and you did it well. Thank you. She You're paid welcome. to say that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> collecting your check and mine. All right, folks, we'll see you and hopefully actually see you in real life at the All-Star Game. We love you so much, and we pr- we considering it's the NHL, I'm not sure I can promise, but I... I'm pretty sure next episode will be more fun. Love you. Bye.